Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 18305. This build includes a number of new features and enhancements over the last few public preview builds and the last build video which was 18282. So it's been about three build releases since our last video, which means it's time to do another one. And since it's almost Christmas, I thought why the hell not? So diving straight in, the first noteworthy change isn't one you'll notice if you're just upgrading build over build, but if you buy a PC with 19H1 next year or you clean install 19H1, you'll notice that the default tiled layout on the start menu has changed. It's now much more simple. It's no longer wide. It's all one narrow column uh, using two different groups, Productivity and Explore. And in it, you'll see a bunch of different configurations depending on whether you're running Windows 10 Home, Windows 10 Pro, Windows 10 Enterprise, or if your business has um, customized it to their liking, etc, etc. But this is the defaults that I'm seeing on Windows 10 Pro here. At the top, we have Office, which is a brand new Office app. We'll actually dive into that in just a minute. It's a web app. Microsoft is very big on web apps right now. Um, we've also got a folder here, which has all of the Office apps pinned, all the Office web apps, that is. Uh, I... Perhaps this will change if your PC comes preloaded with the Win32 versions of Office, but if it doesn't, I'm getting the web versions here, and if we click on one, it will launch us into Edge, which will then take us to the online versions of Microsoft Office. Can we, uh, let's try, sign into the PowerPoint one here. And the great thing about the web apps is that they're free. You can use these without, without having to have a Microsoft Office subscription which is great. So now Microsoft is sort of just promoting its free version of Office, the web versions uh, of which compete with Google Docs. Google Docs is also free. Uh, and now Microsoft is pushing its web apps quite a bit more on Windows 10, especially if you clean install it, which is quite nice. Things like OneNote and uh, let's see, Skype and OneDrive, they are all local. So um, just as you expect. So yeah, it's very interesting to see Microsoft is now pinning the web apps to the start menu by default. I assume if your PC comes preloaded with the full versions of Office, they will be pinned there instead. But if you don't, then you get the web app. So yes, we've also got Mail, Microsoft Edge Photos, and the Weather app. Then we have Microsoft Store, and the rest are downloaded from the store, apart from Paint. Paint's there by default, I think. Uh, so yes, you can see all the games and stuff, Candy Crush and whatnot. It's still there, unfortunately, uh, but it's now buried into a folder. We have Microsoft News, Netflix, and Fitbit Coach, with all of which are store apps, which Microsoft will change depending on, you know, the deals it has going and whatnot. And as you can see, if I click on one of these, it will begin to download that app if it's not already installed. So moving right along, the next noteworthy change is with the Office app. The My Office app has been uh, rebuilt from the ground up. Um, as a web app uh, and it looks quite nice. You get quick access to all of the different Microsoft Office services uh, you can take advantage of and your recent documents down here. This is the this is the PowerPoint presentation we literally just launched. If I click on that, it will take me straight to it in Microsoft Edge or your default browser. And we can continue editing that like that. Oh, okay. Well, it didn't take me to it. It took me to OneDrive for some reason. Uh, let's actually give this a name. Uh, research power research PowerPoint uh, uh, pitch for Windows 11 there we go pitch for Windows 11 so now that's saved to OneDrive I'm gonna say Windows 11 better than Windows 10 and then I can go from there that's now being saved to OneDrive and if we go back to the office app here and perhaps close and reopen it we should hopefully see that folded that presentation there rename itself but it hasn't because of course it hasn't <sighs> okay well let's pretend that that renamed itself so if we come up here we can click on one of the other apps as well this will take us to excel online which we can now begin editing uh, spreadsheets and stuff maybe no okay <laughs> This is a pre-release, guys. This isn't final, of course. There is still some quirks to be worked out. Let's try Outlook. Doesn't work. Word? Doesn't work. Okay, now it's just totally broken. Oh, how long? Excel's back. Oh, all right. It's just, <laughs> it launched me into Outlook 100 times in Edge instead. So, yeah, this is obviously not final. There's still lots to... Uh, be worked out but yes that's the new microsoft office app it acts as a hub to all of the things you're doing in office so your word documents powerpoint excel OneNote, 
uh, all show up here, which is quite nice. You can also upload and open. You can also install Office, which will ask you to go premium and obviously pay for Office 365, which will then allow you to take advantage of the full Win32 versions of Microsoft Office. Okay, moving right along, the next noteworthy change is with a new feature called Windows Sandbox. And what this does is essentially run a brand new clean version of Windows on top of your current version. Please work. Yes, okay, so for some reason it wasn't working the last three times I tried it. Uh, but what this does, you can see it's booting a clean version of Windows 10, a brand new install on top of your current live version. So simply put, Windows Sandbox is a virtualized version of Windows 10 that runs on top of your live install. It's a self-contained version and it's also a clean install every time you launch it. Uh, self-contained meaning that everything that runs within the sandbox is contained to that sandbox. Nothing reaches out into your actual version of Windows 10, which is obviously the start menu here and stuff. Uh, everything is safe and secure within it, which is great for those of you who may be installing programs that may be a little bit uh, risky. They might have malware or viruses in them. You don't know. So instead of running it on your actual system, which could be dangerous for your files and data and whatnot, you can just launch Windows Sandbox, open up Edge here, and download the program instead. So uh, let's download the most popular virus in the world uh, and install it in Windows Sandbox. All that will download like that. And I can run it. And that will now install Chrome. So everything that happens within Sandbox remains within Sandbox. So it's not affecting my current live version of Windows here. Chrome isn't being installed to this start menu or to this experience. It's only being installed to the Sandbox. So that's now been installed. I can now launch Chrome and check it out. And there you go. It's now running within this virtualized version of Windows 10. Nothing crazy. It's not reaching out into my system and stuff. And when I'm done, I can simply close this window. And it says, are you sure you want to close Windows Sandbox? Once Windows Sandbox is closed, all of its contents will be discarded and permanently lost. You press OK, and that will outright kill it and delete everything that was happening within that Sandbox experience. So Chrome still isn't installed on my actual system, but I did install and use it within Sandbox. So everything that happened in there isn't affecting my main PC. Pretty cool. And if we want to do something else, we can relaunch it. It takes a few seconds to boot up because it is loading up another version of Windows 10, of course. Uh, and you'll notice that Chrome is gone. Again, it's a brand new clean version of Windows. Every single time you launch it, it's a clean slate. Everything that you was doing in a previous sandbox is no longer there because it's new. And I think that's fantastic. So yes, that's a quick look at Windows Sandbox. Quite a nice feature. Uh, very work will be handy for those of you who are power users or enterprises who need to test specific software or, or those of you who aren't too sure of a program you're downloading. Maybe it has some risky stuff in it that you're not too sure you want running on your actual system. Um, this is only available for Windows 10 Pro and Enterprise SKUs. So if you're a Windows 10 Home user, unfortunately, this isn't available to you. And it is off by default. You do need to turn it on by going um, into this area here, turn Windows features on and off, scrolling down, and enabling the Windows Sandbox option there. Okay, so let's uh, close out Sandbox and move on to the next noteworthy change. The next noteworthy change is with the Emoji keyboard. It now supports Calmoji, which is sort of like the typed out version of emojis. Uh, it's quite fun, except typical AB fashion. I don't have it here, so I can't show it to you. I can show you a screenshot though, and that's what it looks like. If you're a fan of Calmojis, you can now take advantage of that. Moving on. The other noteworthy change is the ability to set a default tab in Task Manager, except I don't have the damn option. Why not, Microsoft? Please, for the love of God, help me out here. Moving on. Shadows in context menus are back in XAML context menus, at least, except, as you can guess, I don't have that feature enabled because I guess it's another A-B test. You can see normally if I had it working, you'd see a nice drop shadow here and it wouldn't look so flat and ugly. But... Oh, well, it's not working. Also, it would be available here in the start menu as well, behind these menus and whatnot. God damn it, Microsoft. Why? Also, and this was a change in the last build, but the File Explorer icon is a bit darker now. And that's because um, the, the light theme that they've introduced is a bit too bright. And um, the File Explorer icon was clashing with it. So now it's a little bit more noticeable when you have light note mode, light mode enabled. You can also unpin entire groups in the start menu now. Except I can't because I don't have the A-B test. And if we jump into uh, settings here, we can go to uh, ease of access and we can make the cursor bigger. Woohoo! That's cool. So that's a new thing. That's for 
accessibility reasons, but if you just want a big cursor because it looks hilarious, let's do it. Why not? Uh, what else is new in the last couple of builds? Let's see. Oh, yeah. So um, you may have already noticed, but the uh, user icon here and the power menu have icons now, and they look pretty nice. They'd look even nicer if I had shadow effects enabled, but I don't. Thank you, Microsoft. So there you have it, guys. That's a quick look at Windows 10 Build 18.305. Sorry I couldn't show you um, most of the stuff that's in it. For some reason, Microsoft loves to put me in the group that doesn't have any of the nice stuff enabled. I say Microsoft, nobody's doing it on purpose, I hope. Um, it's just luck of the draw, and every single time I seem to have bad luck. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.